go. Look at me, eh? Used to be that Sundays were about hangovers and come downs. And if you told me then I'd be standing here now, making a lunch for my daughter's first day at school, well, I'd have pissed myself laughing. I never really thought about having a family. Oh, when I was younger, maybe. But don't we all grow up thinking that we'll get old and get married and have kids? And then I met him. And the rest, as they say, is history. Oh, that is a really hard question. Just a sense of security and uh, the only the only place that you can that kind of unconditional love exists. Unconditional love. It's the glue which holds your life together really um it's what you it's at the center of what you do and who you're with and who you are and and how you make your moral compass Ooh. yeah Ooh. I know. for me um i have a strong sense of family hygge, which is, uh, I'm from Denmark and we have the concept hygge, which I know has been very like hyped and everything, but in its essence, it's basically like just being together um, and being comfortable. Our family comes in all different shapes and sizes. Well, I think that family is someone who you feel safe around, someone who supports you. And it doesn't necessarily need to be someone who's blood related to you. The family isn't just about the blood. It's about the people that you, you want to be a part of your family as well. It means two things. It means uh, biological family and it means logical family. I, I generally divide it into biological and logical. There's that lovely expression about, um, I think it was Armistead Morpin, about finding your logical family after you've come from your biological family. Trust, um, sort of unconditional love and support, honesty. Um, and it's those elements that, that make a family more than blood ties. I think there's something about um, finding people who are like you, um, who are going to love and support you unconditionally, um, which I think is really, really important. Um, I mean, it's just an important human need that we have. And if it's not met, um, we'll spend an awful lot of time and energy looking for it. Flag has a poster which um, has some graphics on and it says uh, families come in all shapes and sizes and that's okay. Family means to me being proud of our unit and proud of who we are. So my family unit, it's myself and my husband, and we have two adoptive um, children who are twins. We've got our son and our daughter. So there's four of us in our little unit. Our family right now is just the two of us and our 16-year-old cat, Beefy. Um, and then we have a, a little um, daughter on the way. We had a couple of lesbian friends who we've known for well, I, I've known since my, my clubbing days 20 odd years ago. And we, seven, eight years ago, yeah, about eight years ago, we, we just as a random conversation, we spoke about imagine having a child together and how that would work. So that sort of formed the, the, the way that we have now got dual parenting with our daughter, uh, Willow. Willow from day one. Uh, has had two mummies and two daddies. I was born in 2001 through IVF with an anonymous donor. I grew up with two mums. My brother was born in 2003 with a different donor. Reciprocal IVF is um, basically, it's started in, two, they, it was made possible in 2009. Um, and it means that two women, um, two people with female reproductive organs um, can... Um, yeah, so one one egg can be taken out of uh, one person and that is then fertilised um, in a laboratory. This is exactly the same process as standard IVF. Um, so it grows for five days uh, into what's called a blastocyst, and, and that's when the embryo is mature enough to be transferred into the other partner's body. So it's my uh, genetics, but it's her um, biology. Biology. She has the bonds that she carried this child and, and is going to give birth to her.
we feel like we've also created the child together with both of our bodies. My experience of the blood thicker than water type thing is much more um, real for me with my logical family. So I refer to my parents as Jess and David. We have two sons, Edward and Andrew. Um, and they both arrived in our lives at different times. It was a period of my life where I was quite young. I was still kind of a bit like trying to work out who I was and what I was doing and, and all that stuff. Ed arrived originally to stay here at our house for a week, 10 years ago. Yeah. And he stayed for a year and a half and uh, shows no sign of going away yet. I think that it's also quite important to point out that uh, uh, when they came, they were well past the nappy stage, weren't they, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think there's something really good about a sort of uh, um, so uh, pseudo-adopting people when they're already in their 20s. All of us are, be are beholden to, to to the next generation to to, to pass, pass on... Pass it on. Pass it on, yeah, just pass it on. Mm. Sadly, they are still facing discrimination. Uh, usually religious services, churches. Uh, I've heard of uh, churches refusing to baptise children because they're from same-sex families. Do we get stared at in shopping centres and round parks? Yes. Do we have comments made at us? Yes. Um, and a lot of the time that is fine. And a lot of the time it's positive. You know, they're not looking at you because they're being malicious. They're looking at you because they're genuinely interested. But sometimes it would just not be nice not to be looked at. It was always quite awkward when someone asked me, like, what does your dad do? And I just have to decide whether to, like, explain or just pretend. <laughs> when you go to fill in a form about the kids and ask their mother's name and their father's name, and you kind of go, God, can we even fill this form in? Am I being an idiot if I scratch out the mother's name? The only thing, and it's only a small thing, and I don't think people really uh, know, like, they don't mean to be kind of rude or anything, but a lot of, like, we would call the, the sperm donor a donor, but a, a lot of, like, some of our family and friends actually have called him the dad, and um, we kind of believe that being a dad is a role, not yeah. it's not a biological role. People just assume it's mom and dad, and anything else you have to explain and justify. Now that can be exhausting, I think, for same-sex parents. One of the things that we see in our children is the need for them to have to explain their family a lot. So our children do a lot of the educating. And so when a child goes into school, it might be them rather than the teacher who answers the questions about why have you got two moms or why have you just got a dad or why did your dad have a boyfriend or whatever it is. And that can be quite a burden on a very young child. Yeah, and also the way you go on holiday, like we, lo we love to travel and we've been to lots of like places that are really not terrible gay rights record and everything um, just because we like traveling going to adventurous places but we won't really be able to do that with a child. We wouldn't want her to feel that she would have to hide or be ashamed of not who her she family is. or who she is. Yeah. Very often there is an initial sort of shock and that is because you know expectations that you've perhaps had about your child turn out to have been wrong and as a parent and, and that's not to say that your child is wrong or your relationship is going to be wrong but just you've been mistaken and I think as a parent you you always think you know about your child and you feel that you should know um, and you should be there to be able to protect them um, so sometimes in that initial shot there is fear for your child it's just getting over that initial sort of thought something unexpected something that perhaps you don't know about and you feel as a parent, you should always be there, able to protect and sort things out for your child. And suddenly you're faced with something quite new that you perhaps didn't understand. I think things have certainly changed in the UK um, mm. spectacularly. Um, I think when, if looking back to when I was a teenager and, and a young man, the concept that you could form any sort of 
family outside the sort of traditional man, woman and 2.4 kids. Um, I, I don't think it even occurred to us that sort of thing was was possible. Definitely. Everyone's much more accepting now, I've noticed. I think it's probably because there's more TV representation now. I don't think there was any when I was younger. Uh, attitudes are changing and it's becoming more uh, widely accepted. As the parent of a trans young person, I fear the apparent rollback um, of trans rights in the UK. And I'm worried that the genu- general feeling around trans people is is somehow negative, particularly in the media. Certainly internationally, it very much depends on where you are, but I mean, although in some places you see things like gay conversion therapy now being outlawed, in other places um, people are being encouraged to go and be made better. You can see that in the newspaper every day. And of course, in some places, um, a, a declaration of one's sexuality is effectively a death sentence. In Chechnya at the minute, particularly um, since I think 2017, there has been a purge on homosexual Mm. men. Uh, It's a very extreme Islamist government. And uh, parents have been encouraged to, to give their gay children up to the authorities. There's a lot of work to do, well, nationally and internationally, I think. I think there's definitely still work to do. However, I do believe that attitudes have changed. And I think that I have the pleasure and the privilege of going into schools. Education is key. And I think the fact that this year, if all still goes to plan uh, in schools, there is the RSE, so Relationship and Sex Education, that's going to be rolled out in all schools. And schools need to do that. Young children have got nothing against um, people who are LGBT. And that is, that is fact. So I think what we need to do is we need to really sort of, for the next 15, 20 years, do full-on education about same-sex couples, relationships, the fact that everybody's different. Children who we educate now must become the educators. Any gains we make are fragile, and I think it's so easy for attitudes to reverse, to become more authoritarian, to become uh, more bigoted, and I think... There is a constant fight. The Rainbow Project uh, reached its 25th year anniversary last year. Um, It's a health and wellbeing organisation for LGBT plus community. We also offer family support as well. And we worked with um, altogether over 100 families we have connected with and it has been amazing. Flag's vision is a world free from ignorance and prejudice um, about sexuality and gender identity in which LGBT plus people are valued and respected. Because we're not professionals, we, we don't give advice, but we are parents. And so what we do is we share our experiences um, and sort of signpost people to the support that we've uh, found helpful. New Family Social is a network of 5,000 adopters and foster carers in the UK. When LGBT plus people get in touch with New Family Social and say, could I adopt or foster? People always have something in their mind about why they'll be ruled out. And they're almost always wrong. So people worry if they've had mental health issues. They worry if they've had a difficult start in life. They worry if they're not very well off or if they're perhaps not got loads and loads of childcare experience. There's a million reasons that people think they can't adopt or foster. But actually, if you have space in your life and feel that you could prioritise a child and their needs, then chances are you will be snapped up as an adopter or foster carer. The charity that springs to mind that I think um, is pretty on it with linking younger people up to find a a logical family or a found family would be AKT, um, formerly Albert Kennedy Trust. Um, yeah, and just in their work to, um, I guess, find, help young people who are at risk of homeless because uh, of how their family have treated them um, because of being LGBT or the perception that they might be LGBT um, and just finding them safe new homes to, to live with. 
I guess it's not the big things. It's not the big holidays or it's not, you know, the monumental things. It's the really little things when you just, you see them grow and you see them develop um, and you see them make friends or you see them do something really kind or something really clever. And that's it's really precious. Sometimes when you go to bed at night, you, you kind of have to pinch yourself and go, oh God, like, are they... Uh, is this our life? Are they ours? Have we really met? Have we done this? So we, how are we doing it? Yeah, we are. And yeah, it's lovely. My family every year went to the Pride Parade in Brighton. So I was growing up thinking it was completely normal and never thought anything of it. <laughs> also, my mum is a drag king. So I spent a lot of time doing her makeup for shows and stuff and going to her shows. So that was always good. <laughs> Something that just feels very, like, yeah, just feels very grounding and lovely. It's just going home for Sunday lunch. Well, Christmas. Uh, yeah, that's uh, cliche, but it's, I suppose it. I suppose it's it that be. sort of event. It, you know, it's when, for for whatever reason, the four of us have all ended up in the same place at the same time. Uh, when you, it, it, in, at a time when you celebrate something. I'm just really excited to meet her because it feels like not so much for Maria, but because I'm not pregnant, um, it just feels like so long now, and we haven't met her yet. So it's like we just really want November to. <laughs> hurry up and come and, and to meet her really when she was born it was just it's some real moment to sort of see her come out of her mother the way that she did uh, she was c-section so you know perfectly formed in every way but i couldn't get over the fact of how perfectly formed her hands and nails and you know her nails on her feet were that was just little things like that, that you sort of you cherish and that you will always sort of realise how important life is. And now all her class thinks it's cool to have two dads. Do you remember when we were kids and we would play weddings in the playground? We'd make a, a ring out of a daisy and we'd get married by the bike sheds or whatever. Well, now it's not just girls marrying boys. Girls marry girls and boys marry boys. I'm serious. Progress, eh?